The last video in this little series that's showing how to uh, do a little bit of time series forecasting is trend adjusted exponential smoothing. Uh, the book, if you're following along, this would start on page 503 and you can get a lot of the definitions from there. If you look at this, trend adjusted, well let's see, exponential smoothing, there's the exponential smoothing right there. It's part of what I've got to do. In fact, I've got to have a whole column that's showing me exponential smoothing. So I have nothing new to learn there. In fact, what I really know is in my first time period, why don't I just use the naive forecast to get my first forecast in exponential smoothing. Now this trend adjustment is also kind of strange. In order for me to use this second equation, I have to have an initial trend adjustment factor. Well, I'm just going to start with zero, no trend at the first point, and then my trend adjusted forecast is just going to be the sum of the exponential smoothing and the trend adjustment factor. Alright, now, now the work starts. First off, what exactly are we doing with this new function? Everything that we've looked at so far, the naive moving average, weighted moving average, exponential smoothing, uh, it, they work best on data that's fairly horizontal. What that means is if I were to look at a picture, the data falls nearly on a horizontal line. This data is not that different from what I would think of as horizontal data. Trend adjustment, what it's going to do is see data going up and it's going to start favoring in the forecast that upward trend. So that when there's a little bit of a drop, the trend is still going to be moving upward and then it won't start, the trend won't start moving the forecast down until we are way into this downward motion. So let me go over here. I'm going to use this first equation to get my exponential smoothing expression. So that's equal to alpha times the actual demand, the prior period, plus 1 minus alpha times the forecast from the prior period. Okay, there is the exponential smoothing part of my forecast. Now I need the trend adjustment. According to the trend adjustment, I need this beta, again not changing from time period to time period, so I make it an absolute reference, times the difference in the forecast that I just made and the one just prior to it plus 1 minus beta again an absolute reference to beta times last time period's trend adjustment okay so there's my first trend adjustment so I'm forecasting 80 units plus another one and a half units because of the trend adjustment. So here we go. I have a forecast of 81 and a half units for time period three. Okay. Now I should be able to copy all the way down this column. And here's what I see. While we're trending upward, so numbers keep getting bigger, the trend keeps getting bigger and bigger until we start to decline and then my trend adjustment starts to decline a little and then when the trend actually goes negative, so down, 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 the trend adjustment factor goes down as well. Okay. So in the last time period, my trend adjustment factor uh, reduces my or changes my forecast to 106.25. Now, once again, I don't really like looking at all of these decimals in, in, in our instance. It's really not that necessary. I could just look at one decimal and we'd be fine. Okay. All right. Let's take a, just draw a picture of these three columns. Okay, insert uh, this chart 
let's see if this is different than just the exponential smoothing. Well, let's see, the exponential smoothing, let's put in an alpha of 0 0.5. Now, notice that the wiggle has been removed. But the trend adjustment kind of puts the wiggle back in a little bit. How are the deviations, the vertical distances between dots? Well, let's see, the trend adjustment, it appears that they're closer. So perhaps we got a little bit better forecast. Once again, that's yet to be determined. Uh, a couple of uh, modules from now when we start talking about error and error correction. So this trend adjustment factor is, it, it can be played with. In other words, I could change this alpha to 0.9. Look at that, it made my extremes more extreme. What is happening is, is my trend adjustment is becoming larger and larger. So instead of modest changes, I'm making large changes. Well, let's see, I could also change this beta and see how that affects my forecast. You know, if I could just, there we go. One step at a time. You know, if I had our, our error correction methodologies, we could play with this alpha and beta till we find a combination that somehow minimizes my error. But I kind of like the look of what I've got right here except for in this downturn, this, this high trend adjustment factor is not picking up the downturn that fast. Okay, well, these are our methodologies for t time series forecasting in the short term. It's a naive forecast, a moving average, weighted moving average, exponential smoothing, and trend adjusted exponential smoothing. I hope these videos are helpful, and I will make some more as we talk about medium time, t time frames and uh, the error corrections. Talk to you later.